All right, it says we're live and let's get started. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Cursed be the ground for our sake. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for us. For out of the ground we were taken for the dust we are. And to the dust we shall return. folks and we gotta uh get out of the way as soon as possible you know uh we're squeezing ourselves in between art new style and and uh dr johnson um so it's gonna be truncated today it won't be the full hour um i might come on a little later because there's a couple of things i might want to talk about either on this channel or on my uh reaction channel which is uh uh the master teacher response so i haven't decided which one just yet but i might be on later because this is going to be truncated and it is spring break so i hear so let's welcome a few people not too many because we're going to try to get out of the way uh oh charles is up what's going on i'm listening trail andre ninja person the door kicker. <laughs> KT Machine. Babu. Guy Incognito. Inspired Truth. Nanga. Coach DC. D Scott. Ricky. AB Media on Transporter. Dusty Transporter 7. Uh, the Maestro. Alan. What's going on, man? Louis. Excalibur. Hurricane Drig. Uh, Jay De Niro. What's going on? Royal Priest. Tampa Supreme, Paul Wilson, Baby Smooth, what's up? Shade Tree Therapy, G Savage, Kevin, Will AR, Shannon Green, Nate, what's happening? With the super sticker, appreciate you. Robert Platinum, Indigo Flow, and Poor Man's Passport Guy. Oh, Triple A. What's going on, Lex? What's happening, man? Where you been, man? Anyhow. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, you saw the thumbnail. Let's see if I can pull it up as a picture. Right, Cognito says, please someone ask Dr. Umar why he hasn't married one of his baby mamas, okay? <laughs> oh, you know, that's always complex, okay? It's always complex. Charge it to his, his head and not his heart, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tevin King, appreciate you. Support Black Male Media, appreciate you. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Downloads, where it is at? Because I just pulled it up, okay? Just pulled it up. Tevin King, appreciate you. Guy Incognito, takes you. <laughs> appreciate you. I want to ask the same question. You know, but I won't, because you know, I know the brother, so I'm not going to ask him that question. See your screen. Now, this is something that uh, Art Newstyle found, right? Oh, that's the wrong one. Hold on. Presents. See your screen. Uh, where is it? Window. There it is. There we are. Okay, this is something Art Newstyle found, right? Okay. Now, six weeks ago, and I don't, you know, I don't have the 
I might do this individually. Six weeks ago, the Daily Wire, Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro, and 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 uh, Matt, whatever his name is, they all went in on this girl, right? Which is uh, Pearl. They said Pearl didn't represent them. They didn't agree with Pearl's politics. They didn't agree with what Pearl was saying. Blah blah blah. They just went on her for a whole hour, right? Okay. Guess who pops up doing work together, right? Okay. Now you think they're independent? No, they're not. Okay. It's part of the game, right? Is it uh, paying my teacher tax? Appreciate you. Sincere 429. Appreciate you. So um what is so basically what's going on with her? Right? Why is she here? Why is she trying to rebrand herself, right? And we're gonna get into that. So let's uh, play a little bit her of her in um uh, the Breakfast Club because this is the one that kind of shook people, right? This is one black folks pay attention to. They didn't kill her going on fresh and fit didn't matter that much, but her showing up on the Breakfast Club all of a sudden started a whole lot of alarm bells. So we're gonna play a little bit of this, not too much, and then we're gonna get into the real reason why I think that she's here. Okay. And not for black folks. But then you married a white man. Yeah. I'm Dr. Always... Umar would have a huge problem with that. Yeah. Are you familiar with Dr. Umar? I have heard of him. I have not listened to him. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. What is his argument, actually? If you could just repurpose his argument. Uh, he for feels me. That, everything you know, black. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. No, everything. No, he, he feels black men should be with black women because when you're talking about it from an economic standpoint, you want to grow the wealth as a black family. But that and if you marry somebody from another race, then, you know, your wealth will be with that person. And he doesn't like that. OK, I would love to talk to him more about that, because, I mean, it's it's always very interesting to me to hear this paradox of black people who will make an argument that, you know, the system is racist and then also make an argument like this, which is essentially making an argument for the Supreme Court to revisit Virginia versus love and basically say that black Americans and white Americans shouldn't be marrying. I think the greatest thing ever is when people come together on the basis of who they love and get married. A lot of your black feminists say the same thing about them marrying white men. You know, they just don't say that. You know, for me personally, I never thought of my husband as a race. It's, this is very interesting to me that see people go, she's she's married to a white man. I look at my kids. I'm not like, oh, my kids are mixed. I married the person that it made the most sense for me to marry. I have a mind that it, she she didn't say that uh, that she loved most, right? That made most sense for her to marry. Okay, listen to what she's saying. Is just you know, if you even knew half the things that I'm thinking about, the stuff that I'm reading, just go, 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 go all the time. It's it's difficult for me to find. It was difficult for me to find a partner that was a challenge to me. You know, the challenge mm -hmm. that I needed. Um, whether you want to say an academic challenge, whatever it is with my same interests. Mm -hmm. It just was. Uh, what you will know, a lot of times people think that when people come together, it's because of how they look. Actually, I actually read this in a Thomas Sowell book. Maybe it's a Shelby Steele book. Uh, people Shelby Steele, Thomas Sowell. It shows you what her her thinking was. She, she's always been this way. People think it just started. She's always been this way. Tend to marry their IQ, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. You think like if you see two black people together, oh, it's because they are two black people, but actually they, they are probably better matched based on their IQ. Um, you know, it's I more like class than IQ, but anyway. I fell in love with my husband just because I think he is one of the most brilliant people ever. You know, I love him very much. The stuff that we talk about, I'm like, there is no other person that I could have married. We have three beautiful children uh, who are growing up in an environment that I am just so happy that I was able to, you know, what every parent wants to give your children better than you had, you know? And I, that's all I can say. I'm just the luckiest person in the entire world. How do you husband. feel about you not finding him attractive and disliking him for his mind? What do oh you my God. <laughs> what? He, got, he got the smear already ready for the journalists that are listening. You... Ken, it says, her hell? husband is not. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bonus that I also think that he's beautiful and gorgeous and handsome, but it really was about his mind, you know, his ability to just dive into any subject and comprehend it, you know, in a, just any subject. I mean, whether you're talking about mathematics, economics, politics, he could read a book on chemistry, read a book on building houses. And uh, I, don't, I don't think I don't think Candace is a dude. I think uh, Pearl is a dude, but I don't know Candace is a dude. Uh, Candace of the two the same coins. Pearl represents the attempt to contain the red pill. Candace always represents the, the, the red pill gaining traction. Um, I don't think Pearl fit the bill. We'll, we'll get into that. And he just comprehends the concept very quickly. So mm -hmm. I know I married the right person. And I want every person to never allow like race to be a barrier to you finding love. That is yeah. so foolish. That will stop you. And by the way, you know, there's this. There has been so much toxicity. And particularly in black relationships because of the media portraying black men as this or black women as this. And I, we just have to stop doing that, you know. Yeah. Have you ever dated a black man before? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I dated black men, which is another thing that 
I always find really funny because the media tries to portray me as someone who only liked white guys. Mm. Actually, if you want to be honest, I started off on a really strong Asian kick in my life. Oh my uh-huh. God, I thought yeah. I was going to marry an Asian man. Was <laughs> yeah, I I my first boyfriend was Japanese. My second boyfriend was Korean. I just yeah. really loved Asian men. It was weird. Yeah. Connecticut, there was an Asian population in Stanford, Yeah. Connecticut? Well, high... I mean, there's Asian population everywhere. I don't know. Was there, was there a, a higher one in Stanford, Connecticut? No, I think mm-hmm. I just pursued Asian men. I don't know. I just yeah. liked Asian guys. Yeah. Candace Owens fetishizes Asian men. Oh my gosh. Stop painting the headlines for making grab it. What is wrong with you? What do you think is the biggest I'm misconception sure. of Candace Owens? I think the thing that I hate the most is the media makes it, me always makes it seem like I'm so angry all the time. Mm. Which I, that stereotype is crazy. I have such a good sense of humor and I always have so much fun. Genuinely, I'm having so much fun on my show, on my podcast. I think that the worst stereotype is they have me as somebody that's like angry and hardened because they're always pulling out just one excerpt of something that I've said. And I really, I, I don't like that because I'm, I have just a great sense of humor. Yeah. I laugh, even when they get me good. Like if they do something and they say something that I'm like, actually, I hate this person, but that's kind of funny. Like I do look like that. Mm. I'll laugh. Yeah. yeah. I saw that when, uh, when Chappelle yeah. said what he said. Yeah, because I was just like, I'm like, listen, Dave Chappelle, I didn't even think he was actually that funny in that skit of all the Chappelle skits that, you know, mm-hmm. exist. I didn't think he was that funny. I think he, I think he was really angry throughout that skit. But also it's Dave Chappelle. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. Dave Chappelle and he knows my name and he knows who I am. And I think that you need comedians. It's a protected space. And even if they're making fun of people, as soon as we start killing the Jokers, you know, we're we're no longer living in a society that we want to be in. Trust me, when the Kings start killing the Jokers, it's not it's not good. And I love Dave Chappelle. I grew up on Dave Chappelle. I was genuinely honored that he even knew. My name. I was just like, what did you say? It didn't make you. It didn't make you feel no type of way. He called you the most articulate idiot he's ever seen. Yeah, I mean, I didn't like. I said I didn't think it was funny. I thought it was insulting. But I wanted to make a larger statement that we need the comedians. You know what I mean? And even though I particularly did not find it funny, I just thought it was an important just kind of rise above it. You know? And mm. yeah, it was a defensive. It, yes, he definitely intended it for it to be offensive. But at the end of the day, I just I didn't really. Think- it doesn't matter what you say about me as long as you spell my name right. Okay, but she is. You know, now she has been. You know, if we go back to it. Let's scroll back and go to all the stuff that she's been on because uh, there's, there's probably just too much. This is just one of the things, right? Okay. Uh, Breakfast Club. Um, she's been, uh, uh, let's, see, let's go other than the Breakfast Club. Just put in Candace Owens' uh, interview, right? Let's just go Candace Owens, right? Okay. Uh just besides her podcast, okay, Daily Wire, of course, uh, Joe Rogan, of course. Um, oh, oh, here we go. Let's 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 do this one real quick, right? Uh, it's probably too long. No, it's only nine minutes. Okay, she's and, free to do whatever and, she wants to do, and to be wherever she wants to be. And the difference between a publisher like the Daily Wire and a platform like Locals is obviously that a platform should have a very broad range of speech that it allows, including speech that maybe even the creators don't believe is inside what they would consider to be the Overton window. It's a very different thing than direct subsidization him down of they talk particular fast. opinions. State of Florida. And you, you not, did not, it. Not, not everything I say is prophetic. <laughs> that one, that, that felt like an easy call at the time and turned out to be like actually a really easy call. The good news is you, you you did get the upside on the house that you bought in L.A., so you didn't get totally hosed on that. That's true. Which is my fear for you when you yeah. bought that second house. I interviewed you before because I think there's a lot of confusion about you and your positions, which is, do you find that odd, like someone who speaks as precisely and fast as you do, that people seem to be confused over your positions? Yes. And, <laughs> and I find it deeply confusing because, again, I'm public record on everything for at least 20 years. I, I started writing a syndicated column when I was 17. I'm currently 40. So the the notion that you have to go far to search for my opinions is strange to me. But the online world is not a real world. And the phrase I've been finding myself using a lot lately is touch some grass. Mm-hmm. And people need to go outside and they need to touch some grass. Like turn off X, go touch some grass. Turn off turn off Instagram, go outside, look at the sky. Like uh, uh, the, the reality is that if you want to know my position, even then was taking up too much of your time and eating your life, you really need to not have Twitter on your phone. And so I took Twitter off my phone. So what I'll do is I'll check in. Um, But with all that said, yeah, I really don't check Twitter a lot except for the news. Let's talk to just sort of, just sort of where it's at now. She's not with you. She's free. She's free to do whatever she wants to do, to be wherever she wants to be. And the difference between a publisher like the Daily Wire and a platform like Locals is obviously that a platform should have a very broad range of speech that it allows, including speech that maybe even the creators don't believe is inside what they would consider to be the Overton window. That's a very different thing than direct subsidization of particular opinions. Uh, The Daily Wire would not have a host, would not pay a host who was staunchly Mm pro-abortion. It would have no obligation to pay a host who is staunchly pro-abortion. 
And so when it comes to the hosts on The Daily Wire, obviously everyone was able to say what they want. Nobody ever comes to me and says, you can't say X. Nobody ever says that to Walsh. And no one ever said that to Candace. But the reality is that there is an Overton window at The Daily Wire. Obviously there was a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say on this. Uh, and you know, a, a lot of this has happened publicly. Uh, and the, but you know, to the extent that, that The Daily Wire is in fact not a publisher, it is a pla- that, that is in fact not a platform, it is a publisher, that means that there is no moral obligation for The Daily, and there's no free speech problem with The Daily Wire saying we don't wish to pay a particular host or that host saying I don't wish to work here anymore because again, there's a parting of the ways that I'm, that, you know, is not really open for discussion at this point. Do, uh, does it surprise you that so many people, even on our side of this, are confused about that as it relates to free speech and quote unquote cancel culture, like severing a business tie, as long as you're not throwing someone in jail, they're able to be everywhere else is not. I, I'm not super surprised at the controversy, yeah. honestly, because to, to a certain extent, I think that there's been a, a reaction on the right to the excesses of the left. So because what the left did is they said that the Overton window ought to be closed so tight that no one can get inside the Overton window. Basically, if you're to the right of Hillary Clinton, you can't be allowed inside Welcome the Overton to my window. World, yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and not just with regard to platforms, but with regard to publishers. So, for example, this week, NBC News deciding that Rana... It's gone way out of bounds. But the thing is, is that, OK, what I wanted to show is that this is public for a reason, right? And she's been on all these shows. She made all these steps. Um, uh, Joe Budden, she's been on, um, um, she's been on uh, the whatever show. She's been on Fresh and Fit. She's interviewed Andrew Tate. Okay. She's done a lot of these things. Okay. She's made she's made public pronouncements. She, she's she's trying. Basically, she's trying to be attractive to what? Red pill, right wing, white men. Okay, for the most part, right? Why? It's because the, the manosphere is a problem. Okay. And the thing is, what she doesn't want to get that pro got is get attacked by black people, which is why she was actually on the Breakfast Club. Okay. She's on the Breakfast Club. She's on the Breakfast Club for a reason. Okay. So, but the thing is, is that. What is going on with Candace Owens, Pearl, the uh, uh, the the right wing, which is the Daily Wire, you know, because the Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire manager left the Daily Wire to actually work with Pearl. So you think that there's no connection between Pearl and Candace Owens? And now that Candace Owens is separated from the Daily Wire and all of a sudden her and Pearl are actually doing events together. What does that mean? They never left each other. OK. What I would really what I want to show you is why all this stuff is going on. Why why are they so interested in the uh, why are they so interested in the red pill? Why are they so interested in what we're doing? Right? Why 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 is all this stuff? Why why of this unknown quantity, which is the manosphere and the red pill? Why all of a sudden are we garnering all this interest? Let's see if I can find it. I had it in my history. Well, let's close this out, see if I can find it. Might have to go to the site itself because I was listening to it this morning. And this is something that just came across this morning, as a matter of fact. And this is what I've been trying to tell people, that um, the Manosphere itself is a brand. It has become a brand. It's beyond a movement. It's a brand now. Okay. And this, let's see if it's still up. I hope it's still up. I hope they didn't take it down. No, they didn't take it down. Cool. KMS, appreciate you. So the face of the red pill is not only black women, but Candace Owens. Maybe, maybe let me go back to Simpin. No, it's not the face. They're trying to make it the face of it, right? They're trying. They're, they're trying to move the manosphere and the red pill in a certain direction. Okay. And let's get past this a bit. I uh, might have to skip around this, but this is what came across this morning. Everybody was talking about. It. I know. I don't know if you guys heard of it, right? Okay. Okay. Look at it. In the age of the manosphere, what's the future of feminism? With Jude Kelly of the WOW Festival, right? Look at that. The World Economic Forum on their channel. Okay. 
The man, this is something you probably would have never even thought possible, uh, even two years ago, right? The manosphere and the World Economic Forum to be mentioned in the same sentence. Can is trying to promote and control the message. And she, they're, 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 it's not just her. It's not just her because you have the op opposite side. Why do you think FD Signifier and um, what's his name um, with the blue hair uh, came through here, right? Okay. Destiny came through here, right? Why do you think that uh, basically the the book on men and boys by uh, um, uh, by what's his name? Ugh, I'm, I'm drawing blanks. Um, by by Reeves, right? Reeves and Chetty, right? Why why do you think the Brookings Institute is interested in this kind of stuff, right? Why? Okay. Now this is Davos Radio. Okay. This is the World Economic Forum. Okay. What is it in the age of look at this in the age of the manosphere? Okay, they're giving you recognition. Okay, this is what's going on. So, we're gonna play a little bit of this, give it the, the 1.25, maybe 1.5, depending on how slowly she speaks. And a lot of this is feminist. This is actually, this is actually a 30 minute podcast, it's not, it's not a simply a like five minute blip. This is 30 minutes. Okay, now, now in the beginning, she's gonna talk about feminism. We're gonna try to skip through that and find where she really starts talking about the manosphere. Okay about these things yep. they just find a way of talking about them in the right way jude kelly addresses head on the threat to men as well as women of the rise of incels and online misogyny the in in incels and online misogyny you'd have never heard this them talking about this two years ago one years ago it's gotten to the point where it's it can't be stopped because this is a global phenomenon it's not a black thing it's not a white american thing it's a global phenomenon all over the world, okay? All over the world. Uh, I, I remember I've been telling you, uh, the, the the great resignation in the West, okay? Uh, lying flat in China, the uh, the rise, of the, the, the takeover of the doggone uh, uh, grass eaters, okay? Kikomori in uh, Japan and the 4B movement in korea right it's all happening at the same time and, we, and men are checking out and getting tired of this shit, right now of course they're scared we just you're so right about diddy being a gangster lou <laughs> Sue said the same thing like diddy told both of them the number one investment in <laughs> yeah yeah well he, he, he they've said that maggie what's up babe but the thing is is that I, I, you know as far as my work my work, my, my job was to get the black manosphere and the manosphere to prominence, right? To where we can actually get the microphone, get it on the agenda. We're on the agenda now. You can't go any higher than the, than the World Economic Forum, right? I don't care if it's Congress, the president, you can't go any higher than this. These are these are the thought leaders, the money people on, on the globe, okay? They're all having the same problem. This is a problem to them. So anyway, let's go ahead and play this. Candace says has come to lead black conservatives to good here. Uh, really, they really it's not black conservatives. Actually, to, they're actually after the the souls of white men. Okay, her being married to a white man is a plus for her. Uh, uh, Pearl being dating black men was a negative. Okay, it's a plus for Candace. Candace is well established as a conservative. They already know her. White men have already accepted Candace Owens years ago. Okay, she don't have to. She already has credibility with them. Okay, so the thing is, they're trying to plug her into Pearl's place. Okay, the Shapiro group. Anyway, consider continuing. Let's go. Ahead. Give me one if you guys can hear it. Identity of maleness deserves as much investigation and scrutiny and affection as the exploration of what women are nowadays. Subscribe to Radio Davos wherever you get your podcast or visit WEF. So this is this is the same thing that Chetty and Reeves and the World Economic no, not World Economic Forum, but the what the uh, Brookings Institute has been saying for the past two or three years. Okay. CH slash podcast where you'll find our sister programs Meet the Leader and Agenda Dialogues. I'm Robin Palmer at the World Economic Forum and with a look at feminism, masculinity and what those terms even mean. I think it's a very turbulent space. This is Radio Davos. Regular listeners to this podcast will be familiar with the World Economic Forum's annual Gender Gap Report, which looks at the progress in opportunities for women around the world. The most recent one found that while things are progressing, at the current rate, it would take until 2154, that's the year, 
2154 for men and women to be truly equal. And consider this, according to UN figures in 2022, around 48,800 women and girls were killed by their partners or other members of their family. Yeah, all that bullshit. Okay, they, they try, they, they try to inflate the, the, the numbers. Family. That's more than five women or girls killed every hour. Yeah, but out of eight billion people, come on now. By someone in their own family. 55% of all murders of women and girls are committed by family members. The figure for men... Family members, the things, not, not husbands. Okay, not boyfriends, family members, okay? <laughs> is 12%. So there are plenty of reasons to, at the very least, think about what is happening and what can be done. This week's guest is someone who does just that. Jude Kelly is a theatre director who worked with the likes of Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart and rose to become the artist in Girls and Women. And it's because although I'm a theatre director by trade, an opera and music, I, but from a very young age when I was little, I was just fascinated by stories and I wanted those stories. So I, I did the festival for its very first year to celebrate a hundredth anniversary of International Women's Day. And it was such a kind of hit. It was a three day festival. So very big, you know, very varied, very sort of, um, joyful. Thousands of people came. And so straight away, people said, oh, I'd love to do this in Baltimore. I'd love to do this in Australia. Back was in that time. Yes, I think, it, you know, if you start from the idea that the entire world operates, however benignly, from patriarchal beliefs, you know, those are inside, deeply inside all the big theologies. They're inside most of the kind of philosophical starting points, etc. So if you have that as a starting point, which is that patriarchy is the norm, but it can be adjusted to give women more or less space within that framework, then what you've really got set up is the idea that women's rights are conditional on the male structures wanting to give... R rights, period, are conditioned on, on, on male structures, right? Rights are not inherent, okay? Rights is a very liberal concept. Give them those rights, and that implies they can be given and they can be taken. And this is not just about legal... It's not, it's not just women, it's called men too. Things. This is also about cultural attitudes, which arguably are the more deeply held influences in a society. So, obviously, in you know, I just take the UK and most of Europe. When my mother, left, when my grandmother left school when she was twelve and she had fourteen children, my mother left school when she was fifteen and she had four children. Uh, I went to university, and you know, and I have two children. And two children. And guess what? Your 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 female. If you have a daughter, she's going to have one. What does that mean? What does that mean? You just just described a. Uh, 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 my post-industrial society, right? Going from, from rural to post-industrial society. Your grandmother had 14. Your great-grandmother had 14. Uh, oh, your, great, your grandmother had 14. Your mother had four. You have two. That's the problem that's going on right now. That's why they're scared. KMS says, well, according to your theory, the, the technocrats still see an easier path manipulating the men instead of fixing the women. That is true. Is that why they're trying, they're circling the block with another woman, only black this time? Yeah. And from the same group, the thing, they're from the same group. Okay. Pearl and her are connected to the, to the uh, Shapiro group. The Shapiro group disconnected from Pearl. Okay. But they're still together. And why? Because Pearl, the, the Shapiro group manager said that a long time ago, Kevin Samuels left a vacuum. It was filled by Andrew Tate, but Andrew Tate is too radical for them. So they need a milder person that to actually insert X into spot. Right. So they, so Pearl uh, was a female. She's more uh, conducive to females, actually bring females toward the middle. They're trying to bring men and women toward the middle was what they're trying to do, okay? Because this is a problem. I mean, it it's, it's demonstrates that there's an idea that girls' education began to count, girls' careers began to count, this is all very good, birth control happened, you know, et cetera, we'd already got the vote. So you want to think that progress is a linear activity where evidence demonstrates that it's worth women having more rights, let's just give them some more, let's just keep progressing. But what we have seen in the last 14 years are two things. One is that the reclaiming of girls and women's voices was quite strong, leading up to, I suppose, a, a... In other words, the beginning the beginning of the manosphere, right? The be, really the beginning of the MGTOW, okay? MGTOW, the manosphere, that was 2009, right? Right after the first iteration of what we call the, uh, uh, the black manosphere happened on YouTube, okay? The first YouTube apocalypse would kick the man out, okay? 14 years, that goes back to the, the uh, 2010, okay? which is the rise of MGTOW, the rise of the black, of, of 
of the end of the black man, but the rise of mixed out the right rise of the red pill space. Okay, the red pill in essence came from this, right? If you go back and look at it, that's when the red pill actually started in 2010. So that's why she's talking to the age of okay, crescendo during the Me Too movement, where people were saying, I'm not sure why we've ever put up with sexual harassment or, or, or violence against women. We've got to call it out and we've got to say no more. Um, but that produced its own backlash in terms of people feeling, well, you know, do we want that level of calling out? Aren't the things we could just put up and shut up about? I mean, it's it certainly produced a, a, you know, a counter action. And then having fought very strongly for the idea that, you know, my body is my choice and a space that I can decide what I do with, not just in terms of you know, sexual encounter, but also in terms of, you know, the choice to have a, a children or terminate or not. Um, that's been fought like mad in different places. And we've just seen the Roe v. Wade uh, decisions in America, meaning that some states, Alabama in particular, have taken away the right for women to choose if they have a, 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 if they conceived and, and they think it's not impossible for them to give that child a good life. At the same time, we've just had France put into its constitution for the very first time that a woman's right to choose is going to be constitutionally proven. It's going to be part of the, the, the legal framework of the country like forever onwards. So you have these battlegrounds now. She's not saying why. She's just saying this is what women want. But she's not saying why. I think that, that are far more livid than they were 14 years ago. You've got the Taliban removing every possibility with 101. It, see, she's trying to mix in stuff. Like, the Taliban has nothing to do with this, okay? Absolute zero to do with this. On edicts last year alone on girls and women. And at the same time, you have Saudi Arabia in the last five years. Women can drive. Women don't have to wear... Uh, you know, full covering. Women don't have to have guardianship anymore. And so I think it's a very turbulent space, forwards and backwards, very contested areas. But the same thing pulls me back all the time, which is that what is not contested is that it's still a male place to give or take the rights. And that's really worrying. You know, um, I want... It's still a male place. No, it's not. <laughs> Women have plenty to do with this, okay? But the thing is, women don't want what responsibility, okay? They want men to do it for them. They don't want responsibility. I am an optimist, and I do believe that progress will keep going because I think the world needs all of the women's skills. Um, but when you have things like low birth rates in countries, yes, exactly, and they think yes. their economic yes. uh, life depends on more children. See, see, that's the thing. She doesn't think economic life depends on more children, okay? That's what she believes. In other words, these these feminists are willing to go to the mat with this. They're willing to kill our whole societies with this, okay, for their for their ideology, okay, for what their belief is. And the thing is, men don't want to go along with it. There's a lot of pressure pressure put back on women to you know go back in the home, rethink the idea of being a housewife, I suppose celebrate the mother of the family, have more children, and this automatically takes away choices that have been hard won. So you know it's a complex map. You mentioned men and boys come to the Wow Festival. I'm quite interested as a man speaking to you as a, as a feminist campaigner and organizer, you know, where you see the role of men. And maybe I can start by asking in the last few years, we seem to have seen a rise of online misogyny. You think of kind of these this ludicrous idea of these incels online. It might be that that's a very small minority, but it. Incels are a small, small minority. But the thing is, um, the, the, the red pill of the manager is not a small minority anymore because of the way social media is, it gets a lot of coverage. And it, it's very, that's a very vocal, I hope it's a minority, of just out and out misogyny. Is that something you're concerned about? Because that probably didn't exist in that form 14 years ago. Is that something that, that you've noticed and that you want to engage or grapple with? Or is it something you should kind of ignore? Well, there's no doubt about it that the manosphere, as it's termed, ah. is a growing and uh, worrying situation. Ah. Say it again, white girl. Say it again, white girl. There's been a recent poll that's demonstrated that 57% of men think that women's rights has gone far enough or too far. 57%. That's the problem that they're having, 57%. And, and what's, what's the backlash? Men are checking out because they don't think they've been treated fairly. And those are not older men. They're younger men. Yes. Yeah, see, and they say it again, white girl. Say it again, white girl. That's the problem that they're having. Why do you think they kicked, they're trying to put Andrew Tate in jail? Because it's not his influence on older men. It's his influence on younger men, okay? And if, if younger men check out of society, what happened to your society? 
She hasn't thought about that. If if women want to want to uh, put on uh, uh, on head wraps and 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 the jeans and and a work shirt and get their tool belt out and go dr drill for oil or go dig out minerals or, or work in the freaking factory or build houses something like that, God bless them. Okay, but they're not. They don't want to do that. And the implication is that boys and men are feeling rattled and insecure and worried about their identity and their status. And yes, yes, white girl, yes. Reclaim it. Now, I do always feel that including men and boys in the discussion about equal rights is critical because, I mean, you know, we love men. Oh, well, we include them. But, but all of a sudden, before you tell them, you know, it's actually prescribed by men, but now we want to include them in the discussion. Oh, you didn't want to do that shit before. Why now? We live with men. We're born with, of men. We, you know, have sons. We have nephews. It's you don't give a shit. Stop playing. Stop placating. You don't give a shit. You didn't give a shit in your I mean, part of your speech earlier. You didn't give a shit. Now you do. Et cetera, et cetera. And not all the language of change can be about women. It's got to be about society as a whole. You say the same thing that Reeves and Chetty and, and, and uh, the other folks are saying now, including Pearl and Candace Owens. They're saying the same shit from two different sides of the fence. Okay. It's got to be about gender as a whole. Um, and actually, I think that one of the reasons that the manosphere is growing in misogyny is because not only are women much more confident about speaking about their rights and their needs, but more men are also, um, maybe much more quietly, but also agreeing with them. So it makes those men who are like pushing the misogyny back, I think they're outriders, but there's too many of them to... Basically, basically the, the, the men that are pushing... They are trying to advocate for women are pushing back and they're too quiet. It's bullshit. Okay. You try you're trying to get you're trying to convert those men that are on the fence to be on the side of, of, of feminism and and your agenda. Okay. Because uh the majority of men are, are not feeling it, right? They're not feeling this shit. But just let it go and not be worried. Um wow welcomes everybody. You know, I always say if you know a woman or you are a woman, it's bullshit. Bullshit. Stop lying. For you. And increasingly, I think that fathers who have daughters are wanting to make sure that their daughters have the same rights as their sons. They already do. The thing is, but the thing is, is that mothers are worried about their sons now. OK, mothers are worried about their sons because guess what? Their sons are giving up. And they want to make sure that the daughters aren't coming into a world where they, you know, where they're subject. Not just a, just a disadvantage in career choice. So we're about that bullshit. We're trying to convince men to feel sorry for women. Or, or pay gaps or whatever, but also they don't want their girls to be harassed and you know sexually abused by other men. So, in other words, why don't you separate the sexes? You know, like in school and like in work, like like Saudi Arabia does. You want to be protected? You don't want that. You want to you watch. You want to police men's actions, okay? But not women's. A lot of men are looking out for how they can contribute to a fairer world for everyone. Um, but some men. And some boys are finding it really threatening because they don't know, like, what is the new identity then? If, if girls can do as much as boys, are men still required to be the breadwinner? Yes. Are they still required to be the breadwinners? Guess what feminists are actually asking for? Okay. Yes, white girl. Yes. Are men still required to be the strong man? Yes. Are men still required to sort of um, strut their stuff? You know, as a... Uh, and, and strut their stuff. Well, yeah, they are required to strut their stuff because guess what? It attracts women. Women want that shit. Okay. A studs kind of thing, and I think it it's because women want that shit. Looks maxing, body game, strutting your stuff, masculine frame. That's what women want, okay? But you won't say that. It needs men to talk to other men. It needs men to talk to boys and reassure them that actually the, the, the idea of being a strong man doesn't require them to have to be a weightlifter. It doesn't require them to have to dominate a woman. The, the status doesn't have to come. Well, why don't you convince the women of that fact, okay? Okay, about dominate a woman. Convince women of that fact. Men don't want to dominate a woman. They want women to cooperate. But you guys, what you trying to turn women into what? Into dudes, okay? That's what you're trying to do. From those things. But I do think it's got to be men that step forward and, and talk to other men about this. It can't just be women trying to get men to come into their space. That's not going to work. And you've even had a festival. We, I love the acronyms. Wow. For women of the world. And you had a Being a Man festival, which is BAM. <laughs> so what... Why? And have it, where you've heard this for it, this this poor being a man, right? As prescribed by who? How feminists want men to be. But guess what? 
Y'all don't like those kind of men. You've said that. That's what's going on with, with what's going on, especially amongst elite people, right? Educated people. Y'all don't like those kind of men. What kind of men do you like? One that leads, one has masculine frame, one that earns more than you, one that's smarter than you, blah, 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 right? Those are the kind of men that you want. Men are not killing feminism. Women are. Okay, uh, feminism is also killing societies. Did you create that and what's the future of that if there is one? Well, I started BAM a few years ago when I was at South Bank Center as a response really to male suicide and the crisis in male mental health. It, it wasn't intended to be a sort of Trojan horse by which we could sort of persuade men that they ought to be feminists. It was it, actually- Yes, it was. Stop lying. Stop lying, white girl. Wasn't feminism started by racist white women? Why do you think we trust them, okay? We don't trust them. It's not us, it's, it's, it's the females, okay? It's the female. She's not talking to us, okay? Gotta remember, black people take this personally, right? She's in the UK. She don't give a shit about you. Ken and so on, for the most part, she don't give a shit about black men. It's not about black men. It's about the majority of the people in the Western society. Those are white, okay? Those are white. She don't give a shit about you. A festival that said, look, maleness is wonderful. Femaleness is wonderful. I mean, the whole intoxicating territory of gender, fluid or not, is fascinating. I mean, this is the stuff of us. Uh, not interested. If you, if you, if you are going in on me, okay. You are. Go ahead, snipe him. Okay. I don't know why you're here. Go ahead and snipe him. If you're not interested, go someplace else. Go ahead and snipe the brother. Okay. Get rid of him. Go ahead and snipe him. Get him out of here. Thank you. I don't know why y'all come here. We are humans and we have gender. And But what are the things that men particularly have had sort of put on them um, that maybe are useful or not useful anymore? And I was, I mean, I have a son and I have a grandson. And I was really alarmed by this idea that, you know, men don't cry that you know, men can't feel things, that men have to disassociate rather than explore their inner landscape, et cetera. Because the rise in male suicide, particularly with young men, it, it, was, you know, it was an epidemic. And also the rise in, in intimate partner violence was suggesting to me as well that men had uncontrollable rages. That uncontrollable rages. And in other words, you're trying to scare uh, females. You're trying, you're trying to cow men back into what you want them to be by saying that, they were, oh, they're so scary because they, they because they, they're they're not into their feelings and not being expressive. They can't, you know, blah, 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 blah. In other words, you got to be more like women. You got to talk about your feelings. No, bullshit, okay? You got to understand what men are trying to say to you. It's bullshit. That, that's been feminist language for the last 20 years. It only became a problem when white women, white women started treating white men the same way black women treat black. Now the moms have no choice to speak out for it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They hadn't been given any tools to navigate with. Um, so the festival was about all kinds of things in the way that WOW Festival is. You know, it was music, it was um, sport, it was literature, it was all kinds of subjects. But it... Uh, about whatever, bullshit, okay? That's bullshit. It's the, you know, it's bullshit. It was essentially saying the identity of maleness deserves as much investigation and scrutiny and affection as the, as the ex exploration of what women are nowadays. So I stopped doing it for a while, not because it, you know, it, it wasn't relevant, it's still relevant, but I, I left the South Bank Centre to turn WOW into an independent charity, and it's now the WOW Foundation, and it's been an independent charity for a few years. And obviously that's a... a All right, you guys start, start looking out for these trolls, okay? Time when you need all hands on deck to secure funding, etc. Um, I just didn't have enough bandwidth to carry on with the man's festival. Well, we're going to go back to that space again, uh, probably Wham now. What's a man? Um, and we've got a lot of male partners and male organisations who are partners. I, I tell you one other thing that has happened in the, the last fourteen years, and this does relate to men as well as women. The aggression on social media is so great now; it's disproportionately aimed at women. But you know, again, now, aren't they, don't they sound like black women now? Okay. It, in other words, they can't control it. And you're talking about women who have husbands, who have children, who have friends. We should all fear 
for the danger that we're asking women to be in, particularly when they're public figures. So the number of women withdrawing from being MPs or, you know, being... Men get the same death threats as women do. Stop. ...heads of things because they, not just the pressure of work, but also the, the pressure of social media aggression and genuine fear is real. So I, I do think this is an area where if men believe in masculine uh, values of standing up for women... Oh, really? Now, that's called patriarchal values. Now you want them, okay? Now you want patriarchy. You want protection without responsibility. That's what you want. Sound, you sound like black women back in the in, in back in the, the mid two thousands, okay? The mid aughts, exact same language. Then this is an area that they could really stand up and be counted on. Yeah, we live in a time where identity politics, whatever that means, is a big deal, and you can identify yourself as a feminist. And I think feminism has evolved over the years that that can mean a lot of different things within societies and between societies. Yes. Who would have thought Barbie would be a feminist movie? Ah, yeah. No, whoever thought, right, until they did it, right? Why don't feminists talk about the less DV rates, hypocrisy? That's part, not part of the narrative, sir. Yes. At least. yes. Um, whereas for men, what is the identity of, we don't even have a word for, you know, a masculine word for a feminist. For some people, for some of the incels, the misogynists, it's like, this is a man. This is a hard guy with a, a cigar. They're going with the, 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 the in, uh, hard guy with a cigar. This is a man for the incels and the misogynists. They're trying to tie misogyny with incels, okay, with, with the manosphere. Incels are a very tiny, tiny fraction of the manosphere. And the expensive car and a, and a string of, of women. I think women have lots of positive role models, and I'm sure men do as well, but it's, it's maybe not so obvious. Maybe that's part of the work you would do. Yes, I, I mean, I think that, you know, women have had to tussle with the, the sort of the idea of, you know, the dumb blonde, the glamour puss, the sex symbol, the decorative extra, et cetera, which is often part of popular culture. They've had to struggle with that because it's very demeaning and it's, it's in front of you all the time. And, and similarly, you know, men are presented all the time with stronger or lighter versions of the James Bond idea, you know, because they loved it because they loved that okay in other words you, in other words you basically you want a jane bond okay that's what they want boy they they be in a mirror like dirt diggler <laughs> trying to convince themselves they love feminism <laughs> business woo women and dispose of them or you know maybe they just get killed off whatever uh drive break cars and you know somehow you know be able to get into a fight at the drop of a hat and they're very confusing images. None, none of us really live like that. Um, but the idea that you should aspire to live like that, I think a lot of men don't want to do that either. I don't like the idea that young men go around feeling frightened of other young men. They're more likely to get killed by other men than they ever are likely to be killed by women. So they, uh, but I think also we haven't encouraged men to talk about a new kind of masculinity without implying that so it's here we go. Weak, a weaker version. There we go, new kind of masculinity. That's, 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 that's what they're about. That's what they're trying to do. On both sides of the aisle, they're trying to get a new kind of masculinity. Of masculinity. Um, so I, I just think men should do a lot more talking to each other and the, the role models. We are talking to each other. That's what the manosphere is about, talking to each other, okay? Without you, without your agenda, you're trying to get men to actually input your agenda. That's what you, really what you want. The manosphere was designed for men to talk to each other. That's what we do. That's what we do of men need to change and it, it requires the courage of men who don't want to just emulate you know the hard man it requires their courage to step forward and say i'd like to talk about what my values are i tell you something really interesting i watched a documentary about aretha franklin and she i mean she's such an extraordinary you know performer in other words look look at it. she's using a, a, a black uh, uh icon as as a symbol right listen to her listen to her aretha franklin right artist and, and committed to civil rights as she was. And um, she said that she watched all these kind of rappers in America with all of their misogyny, with all of their kind of demeaning of women. And she called a meeting at her house for all of these male rappers, and Snoop Dogg being the kind of key guy. She told him, she basically said to him, you'd be at my house eight o'clock in the morning, bring all of these people. And they all came because, you know, it was Aretha Franklin. And um, she basically read in the riot act. She said, you know, she said to them, okay, you know, Am I a bitch? Do you want to call me a bitch? Do you want to call me a whore? And they were all like, oh, Miss Franklin, Miss Franklin. And she said, don't you realize what you're... Anyway, if you watch that documentary, Snoop Dogg goes away and says, I changed everything from that moment on. I'd never thought about it. I didn't understand. I do now. Um, and 
That's why that's that's the see, that's exactly why Candace Owens is trying to marry women feminist elite feminist rights with civil rights, okay? Now she's in the UK. She's in the UK talking about talking about the manosphere in America and about the black manosphere in particular by using that example, right? That's black manosphere. That's so Candace Owens is doing the exact same thing, okay? The exact same thing. She's appealing to uh, uh, civil rights through black people. The exact same thing, okay? Oh, fifty percent of white women vote for for the abortion party. We all know what the abortion is about. They're asking older men to go and police younger men, not with any incentives, but out of charity and concern for women. You mean chivalry? That's what she means, okay? Chivalry with uh, female specifications. That's what she means. You know, it, there are big changes that can happen inside these dark male spaces, but it shouldn't just be women calling it out. It's got to be men too. What differences have you found in different cultures? So you, you created this. Are, are there big differences that have struck you? Are there common themes that have struck you? Well, there's more in common than not. Um, I mean, just to talk about the bleak things, violence against women is absolutely endemic everywhere. You know, countries that pride themselves on having very high uh, gender equity still have to announce daily figures of rape, daily figures of death by... Have to announce, announce that. But the thing is, but thing, you think that... That's how come she has to go to someplace else instead of the West, because that, that shit doesn't exist in the West. Said, uh, Charles, that men should stand for women, we, but we will not speak to women about their flaws. Men should protect women, but what happened to this proclaimed strength? Pick a struggle, not here. Woo! Heard, heard that, Charles. Intimate partners or suicide because of domestic abuse. And that is rife. And it's almost one of these things where people think, well, it, you know, it just happens, doesn't it? Like, there's nothing you can do about it, which I completely don't agree. There are things you can do about it. And I think this, it comes from an idea that women finally ought to be controlled by a man and a man's rage when he can't do that. Not all men, obviously, but it's, it's, it's deep inside that somehow you ought to be able to own, possess. In other words, basically, that's what it goes back to, that, that doing uh, a traditional roles as a female means that you're going to be owned, okay? And our black women say the same thing. And basically what's happening uh, uh, in the manosphere is not only just the, uh, the the manosphere and they actually them laying down, and people them not participating, but they're leaving, okay? Passport bros is a global phenomenon, not just in the United States, in South Korea, where they go into Japan and um, and Vietnam to get wives, okay, F fuck the Korean women, okay, forget them, leave them where they lie. Same thing with uh, with Europe. In fact, I think it was Sweden they were trying to ban um, Swedish men from going outside the country and bringing back in importing wives. This is, this is global. So Candace on is just part of this whole continuum, right? She's not she's not there by herself. OK, Ben Shapiro, you just heard him. He didn't he didn't bad mouth a, a Candace Owens about leaving. He didn't. He didn't say she was fired. Because she hasn't left. Don't believe the hype. This is all connected. OK. And uh, Dr. Johnson's getting ready to start if, if, he, if, if he hasn't already started. So we're going to close this one out. I told you to be truncated. I might be on later because. Um, it's not about Candace Owens, right? Because it's not even about Pearl. I told you that you guys that from the beginning, right? The far more important people people are people like this chicken Davos, okay? The World Economic Forum, okay? The Brookings Institute, okay? Uh, Reeves's book of, 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 of boys and men, right? That's those are the places. That's where the money's coming from. The Shapiro's are just carrying the water for the for the global elite. The global elite recognize this as a problem. The, the, the World Economic Forum is representative of the global elite. It's bigger than that. But the manosphere has gotten their attention. The thing is, now that we have their attention, what do we want to say? That's number one. Number two, what agenda do we want for our men, for our boys? Okay, fuck it. If you don't want to uh, be home, uh, she said it earlier, if you don't want to be home uh, taking care of babies, you don't want to have kids, okay? You don't want to get married? Fine. Hold your own ovaries. Okay. We we have no need to protect you. Okay. We don't. We have a duty to, to protect you. If you're a man just like we are, fight for yourself. 
hold your own ovaries. Somebody grab you in the ass, turn around and slug him. And have a fist fight. You're going to get your ass beat, but have a fist fight. Okay? We're not trying to make the world safe for females. You want to be a man? Be a man. Anyhow, let me go ahead, uh, go ahead and, and show Dr. Johnson's channel. I do believe he's on. He is. He's getting ready to get started. So we're going to. That's going to be his upcoming show when it when it was cool to be masculine the honest media test okay so we're gonna throw that link into the chat and you guys come on over and i'm gonna end my stream i might do one later i'll either be here on or on my other channel if, if it's not here i'll put it into the community tab okay because it's a bunch of things i actually want to straighten out so I might do this later. But thing is, thank you all for coming, even though it's truncated. Don't believe the fucking hype about Candace Owens. Don't take her too seriously. Then don't trust her ass or Pearl or Andrew Tate or any of, of these other people, right? Okay? They're not on your fucking side. Okay? They're trying to get you to buy into their agenda. Beware. So don't get drugged into this. Well, you guys support Candace Owens. If she says something that you agree with, then use that shit like I do. If she's going to put in, help get into a law that's going to help black men and boys or white men and boys do something, I agree with it. Okay. If she's going to help black boys get more jobs and get more ref representation, you know, I'm behind her. Do I trust her ass? No. I know who you work for. I know what your agenda is. It ain't about me. But guess what? As long as it works for me, I'm going to ride with you. When it don't work for me, I'm going to kick your ass to the curb where you belong. Because you ain't with me. You don't belong to me. But anyhow, let's get out of here. And I will see you guys hopefully later. So Adrian says, if you don't want to be home taking care of babies, cooking, cleaning, Come to Davos. <laughs> man, get your ass to work and, and, and pay 50-50 or buy your man. I see Klaus has unleashed the hounds. Yes, he has. Let them eat fate. A domestic violence rates are the highest in lesbian relationships. 70% child abuse happens in single mother homes. 73% of the DV in the black community, the women are the, are the aggressors. Next struggle, please. But those are facts, sir. Those are facts. What I'm, what I'm saying is, I'm, I'm, I'm saying peep game, okay? I'm trying to tell you guys that peep game is bigger than you. Don't let black women or white women or black men drag you down into this micro shit, man. It's bigger than you. Candace Owens is not about you. She's trying to position herself for a bigger thing, okay? Is she talking black? Is she talking nice? Like she agrees with black people? But... But yeah, Thomas Sowell and, 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 and Shelby are not pro-black, okay? They're not. They're not pro-black. So don't believe that the Shapiro group are not still with this woman, right? She's still getting pressed. She, you know, if the Jewish lobby wants to go in on you about you talking greasy about them, they try to crush you, okay? Look at what they try to do with Kanye. Try to crush you. They haven't... Uh, not open one word about Candace Owens. Not one word. Why is that? Because she ain't left. The bed winch is still in the bed. She ain't left. But anyhow, y'all, uh, Dusty, take us out, and I will see you guys later. Woo!